My name is Rob Horsberg. We are in the Limpopo region of South Africa. Here at the Amarentia Estate, we are doing a conservation program where we are trying to lure wild bees away from parrot nesting boxes. There is competition between the bees and the parrots where the bees are often moving into the nesting cavities and causing problems for the parrots. In the late 1950s, some African queen bees were brought over into South America, into Sao Paulo in Brazil. And they escaped and they expanded quite quickly all throughout South America into Central America. And now they're in the Southwest United States and in Florida where I am. And there's over 30 bird conservation projects that have issues with Africanized bees taking over the nest cavities. So what we have done is to set up nesting boxes just for the bees. We call those swarm traps. That is to lure the bees into the traps and hopefully reduce the competition with the parrots. And once the bees are staying out of the parrot boxes, the parrots should be able to reproduce in the boxes without any problems. We're using a method called push-pull, where we apply an insecticide that's repellent to the bees but safe for the parrots inside the parrot box, which pushes the bees away from the parrot box. And then we simultaneously give them pheromone-baited swarm traps, which are boxes that are more suited to the bees' needs. And so this way, we're pushing them out of the parrot box and pulling them towards the trap boxes. And that way, we can keep the parrot boxes available for the parrots to actually use. It is very effective. I've tried this in both Brazil and South Florida with um, really good results, and that's why we're here applying it to the Cape Parrot Project. This is an example of one of the boxes that we have put up. We are hoping to get wild bees into the managed boxes so that we can actually use the bees in a managed situation so that they can produce honey and pollinate the crops on the farm. After we've harvested the honey, we are left over with crushed wax. That wax is covered in honey and is a very sticky mess. What we do is just put it in a bucket, put it out for the bees, and it's an eco-friendly way for the bees to actually recycle all of that honey, and in the process, they dry out the wax and make the wax appropriate for turning into candles. Explore Trees is made up of myself and David Wells and Vinand, who's based at this estate. And myself and David, we are based in New Zealand and England, uh, respectively. And we fly over approximately two times a year for this project. Because of our tree climbing equipment, because of the friends and volunteers that come along with us to make the job easier, and the access that we have to all very advanced tree climbing equipment. And one of the issues we've had on this expedition is we're using high angle tree climbing equipment, which itself uh, has lots of safety issues. But then to make matters worse, we're climbing, some of the trees we're climbing in bee suits because a lot of these trees have got active bee nests in them, which we're going to be removing and transferring to the local farms. It's a really lush subtropical forest, so we're getting hit with pouring rain in the morning, which makes our trees, they're covered in uh, lichen, sooty mold, so these trees are really slippy. It's a bit chilly in the mornings, and then we come up climbing, and it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So having to drink lots of water, look after ourselves. It doesn't take too long to start getting dehydrated, and then we've got our bee researchers that insist we're, wearing, we're taking our bee suits in case we get start getting attacked. So it's just the heat, uh, the heat and the rain, it's what makes these trees live here so well. And one of the amazing things about uh, Explore and the expeditions that we do, we came here two years ago to measure the trees, and now we're working on the Cape Parrot project, and in doing so, we're putting attracting boxes for the bees, and so with the bees, we can then put those down for the local farm. The local farm can then fill up with honey and beeswax, and then the local school are being trained how to extract the honey, how to make the beeswax candles, all the beeswax products. And so that therefore gives them some financial benefit to us being here. And it all started from coming to climb a tree. One 
one of the biggest issues when you deal with a conservation project with um, endangered parrots is that even if you get the parrot numbers up, if you don't restore the habitat, they cannot maintain those numbers. So um, it's actually very important to be planting yellow woods because that is the main tree that they depend on for both nesting and for food. So without restoring the habitat, we're not gonna be able to save the Cape Parrot.